Welcome to the Healthcare IT Today CIO Podcast. I'm John Lynn, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. I'm excited to bring you the most practical healthcare CIO insights and perspectives. We know your job is challenging and we want to help you be more successful. And today's guest is Ed Bozy. He's chief innovation officer at City of Patterson. Welcome, Ed. Thank you, John. Uh, glad to be here. Yeah, so excited for this a bit unconventional, uh, you know, CIO and chief innovation officer at a city, uh, you know, but there's such a a health aspect to it that I thought this would be a lot of fun. So for those that don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself and city of Patterson. Uh, Yeah, myself, this is my first time in uh, in the public sphere. I was uh, a consultant at PricewaterhouseCoopers and VP of innovation at Xerox, worked with the Palo Alto Research Center. Uh, but just, you know, was drawn into Patterson. They had some compelling needs. Uh, the mayor convinced me to come on board. And uh, wow. the first thing that he gave me was the uh, opioid and homelessness crisis in the city. Uh, <laughs> Small problem. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I asked him, what am I going to do on day two? Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, we're, uh, you know, we're a city of 160,000 uh, residents, but we have as many as five overdoses per day almost uh, from opioids. So really quite a compelling problem. As a, and as anybody might guess, uh, opioid addictions actually do drive a lot of crime, right? Those people seeking opioids will you know, do absolutely anything they can do to get them. So uh, yeah, it's quite a compelling problem for Patterson. Yeah. Addiction drives all sorts of behavior. That's uh, pretty tough. So that makes sense. Uh, I've seen that firsthand. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, you know, you, you're working to address this opioid crisis and you recently got a, a million dollar grant for an opioid focused program you call Real Fix, which yeah. I think that's a great name. Uh, tell us about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we were we, we couldn't be more excited. I mean, it was from Bloomberg Philanthropies. It was a, a worldwide competition. There were 631 cities that entered and only 15 cities uh, won. Uh, that's worldwide. Uh, ours was the only uh, application that had to do with opioids, oddly enough, even though it's a, a global problem. Uh-huh. Uh, I think a lot of people have sort of just kind of put their hands up about it. Uh, but the thing is, is that once we delved into it and gathered the data and interviewed the stakeholders and just really got into it, we realized that this was really a problem of customer service. I know that's crazy, but the treatment industry has literally the worst customer service of any industry I've, I've ever seen in my you know, 30 to 40 years uh, uh-huh. professional life. Uh, so Real Fix really has to do with uh, coordinating the activities of all the service providers so that you know, when you are approaching uh, withdrawal, which is the thing that you, as an, uh, somebody with an addiction, you want to avoid withdrawal at any cost. Uh, when you're approaching withdrawal is when you're most likely to try an alternative to opioids, which would be medication, uh, mm-hmm. specifically Suboxone. Uh, and so we made the objective of Real Fix is that within 90 minutes of you requesting treatment, we would get you the treatment at your door. Wow. So that's really so for the we proved it, and really for the first time, it was a time that it was the first time that anybody can get the alternative to opioids faster, easier, and cheaper than the opioids themselves. Ah. Uh. See, that's a real fix, uh, you know, pun yes. intended. But uh, <laughs> my, my audience loves pen, puns. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's really interesting, though, because you know, in healthcare, we talk about the interoperability problem and sharing data. You know, mm-hmm. I think the opioid is an even more complex data problem because you have to use all these outside organizations, some which are not really in the formal healthcare area. They might be part of cities. They might be part of nonprofits or, or other organizations. Uh, so how have you used technology to really address this complex data problem? Well, I mean, the data really was, you couldn't understand the problem without looking at the data. You know, it was actually absolutely mind bending when you look at like when overdoses occur uh, during the day is they, the peak period is pretty much between 4 p.m. and 11 p.m. Uh, but most treatment centers close at 3 p.m. So that was just like, that was crazy. Uh, and even, even if the treatment center was open, you know, they very often would say, you know, you have to wait a week before we can admit you. And that that is six o'clock in the morning. Wow. So, you know, we, we, just, uh, we just said, you know, we need something that is going to tightly coordinate the service providers to make 90 minutes possible. 
right? So it's that, uh, so, you know, we created, basically it was sort of like, we call it a computer-aided dispatch system. You mm. know, the software was QuickBase, uh, which was we used to, which is a business, pro, you know, a no-code business process management system. Nice. So it was really perfect for that to really tightly coordinate each uh, stakeholder's activities so that, you know, the person is calling into the call center. We're gathering their information, insurance information. So gathering that information so they only have to provide it once, right? Uh, connecting them with a teledoc. You know, the teledoc can read, come into QuickBase okay. and grab the information that they need. They say, you know, I'm going to grab the next person out of the queue. Uh -huh. um, they say, okay, I'm done with them. You know, they, they click a box saying, you know, I, I've claimed this patient. You know, they click another box. I'm done with this patient. Uh, click another box. I've sent the script to the pharmacy. Uh, and so here the operator is being informed that everybody is doing their things appropriately, right? And operator is calling the pharmacy and saying, you got that? Yeah, you got it. You know, you have to fill it in 15 to 20 minutes. Yes, I got that, right? Mm -hmm. So when they're done, they, they notify the operator, yep, we're done. And then the operator is sending a, uh, a private delivery company to the pharmacy to pick it up. Uh, and, and so the operator is tightly managing this like an orchestra leader and saying, okay, doctor, you got 30 to 40 minutes, you know, pharmacy, you got 15 to 20 minutes, you know, delivery person, you've got this amount of time. So by the time we get to the delivery person, you know, the operator knows through the quick base tool, it's like, okay, you've got 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 10 minutes to get this medication to the person's door uh, to meet that 90 minute target. So it was really just uh, tightly coordinating that process flow that enabled the 90 minutes. All of the service providers all independently work we're always operating out there, but we're never really tightly coordinated. Interesting. Well, it sounds like the Domino's pizza tracker, right? <laughs> like, that, that it feels actually, very much. <laughs> that was actually the motivation. Was oh, Domino's. really? Yes, absolutely. It was. I, I said from the beginning, it should be easy, uh, as easy as getting a pizza, you know, because I get a pizza when I'm hungry. You know, I get opioids or, or all medications to counteract the opioids. Uh, when I'm approaching withdrawal. So it's at least as important as, as getting the pizza, <laughs> right? Um, so, yeah, uh, so that's needed. what, yeah, and I think that, that it's funny that you mentioned that because I think that the problem with the treatment industry is they benchmark themselves against other treatment providers. Mm. But, you know, any consultant would tell you that sometimes you need to take a look at the benchmark in a, in a similar industry and see how well they do. And so compared to each other, the treatment industries are all very much alike. But when they compare it to something like Domino's, they look woefully inadequate, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and I think what's interesting is that the Domino's one is a hard problem to solve. And they own the end-to-end -end supply chain, if you will, for mm -hmm. that tracker, right? True. Whereas you very don't. Very good point. You, you know, no. It sounds like you're using QuickBase to coordinate, you know, using the data, you know, to be able to coordinate all these outside entities to be able to deliver your solution. Right. And it's also so, I mean, there's a couple of things that we're doing. One, you know, during the interaction itself, we have, you know, timers built into QuickBase. So it says, OK, well, we've allotted 30 to 40 minutes for the doctor. And if the doctor hasn't clicked off that box saying I'm done with this patient, uh, you know, a, a reminder goes off and the operator contacts the doctor and said, did you forget to tell us? Uh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't forget us. Don't forget next time. You know, same thing with the pharmacy. It's like you didn't tell us that it's ready. Is it ready? It's like oh, I forgot to tell you. It's like you know the alarm went off telling me to poke you, uh, and so uh, yeah, it was quite essential. But then even after the fact, uh, we're using QuickBase to gather the data from all of the interactions mm -hmm. to say, hey, you know what the the uh, the variance in the delivery time goes from you know five minutes to twenty five minutes. You know how do we cut down on variability there? Yeah. You know, so we can get to track each thing. Like one thing that we discovered was, uh, I don't know, maybe this is not funny, but uh, people that call for addiction treatment who are high uh -huh. have a longer doctor's appointment. You know, they, they seem to take longer with the doctor than, yeah. than those that are, that are sober, well, sort of sober, um, which is important because the odd thing is, is the person that is high actually isn't looking for his medication quite as fast as the person that is sober. Mm. So it's kind of interesting to capture that and say, yeah, okay, we got sure. more time to play with with this person, but but he takes more time and this we have less time to take with this person and they actually take less time. Yeah. Now that's really interesting information. And I think it's interesting that the city is doing this. Uh, what's been your collaboration with local healthcare professionals on it? 
Well, that, you know, that's, I think that's a very important, uh, you know how they say like constraints make you be more innovative. Yeah, right? for sure. Uh, the budget constraint made us be more innovative because everybody else was saying, well, we're going to hire, you know, uh, we're going to use the uh, emergency department uh, to provide transportation. So that's going to be a full, you know, we're going to hire our own doctor, blah, 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 blah. That would have blown our budget out of the world, uh -huh. untenable. So really all of the players are really private actors, you know, mm. the Teladoc has a private practice, sure. right? Uh, the delivery company, private delivery company, they're, you know, non-emergency ambulance company, uh -huh. and they also handle deliveries for us. Uh, the pharmacy, private pharmacy. Uh, so all of the players were private uh, and, and that, and they work much more efficiently. We get to pay them just for service as opposed to keeping them on staff and paying for them even mm. when they're not being utilized. Sure. Uh, and also St. Joseph's Hospital, the emergency department is absolutely an essential partner for dealing with the homeless. Uh, because for the homeless, it's a bit, bit of a different pathway is that you know, a homeless person calls and we're providing non-emergency medical transportation to the emergency department. And in the emergency department, they're getting them started on medication. And even there, we're still tracking it to see that we get that person relief within 90 minutes. Because that's the key, right? If I don't give you relief within 90 minutes, you're going to seek your only other alternative, which is illicit opioids. And that's the thing that we want to avoid. So what's been the results? I mean, I, I think this is a relatively new program, but you know, have you seen some of the impact of being able to deliver this so quickly? Well, <laughs> it was it was really amazing. It's like, uh, you know, we only piloted for a short period. We're waiting for our grant money to be delivered gotcha. uh, this month, and we're wow. going to scale it up. But uh, it was uh, kind of funny. It's like before we even did our first pilot, you know, we're ready for the to turn it all on. Spoke to the Teladoc, you know, the one Teladoc we had. And he said, yeah, 90 minutes, I think I could take uh, a visit in 90 minutes. I said, no, doctor, I told you before, everything has to be done in 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh, I don't, I don't know if we could do that. Uh -huh. uh, well, we, we tested it. And on average, we had the medication to the person's door in 76 minutes. Wow. And nobody was more than 88 minutes. So mm -hmm. it was, uh, it was, it was quite amazing that we proved it. And that's, that's really where using the quick base tool was like essential is that because if I had to have like a more, if I had to have something that, that required coding, right, to uh, develop this process flow. And then every time I tweaked it, you know, and I would have had to go to IT. Program. Yeah. And then every sure. time I tweaked it, I would need to go to IT. It's like those iterations would have made it such that in the, because we had like a, Bloomberg announced 50 champion cities, and then they set us 50 champion cities to compete against each other. Okay. And in like a three month period to take our proposal and bring it to prototype, right? Um, and, uh, and we had made a pretty outlandish claim that we'd be able to do this in 90 minutes, right? So <laughs> we, had, we were doing play acting and people were playing the roles of patients and playing the roles of doctors and emergency departments and transportations. And every time we would play that, we would tweak the quick base tool a little bit. Tweak, 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 tweak. Uh, so that was important because we got to iterate very quickly. Yep. Uh, but then, you know, our Bloomberg uh, coach said, I think you guys are good. You, you don't actually have to prove it with real people. And I said, no, 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 no. We've made like an outlandish claim that we can deliver it, you know, real patient, real doctors, real medication, controlled substances within 90 yep. minutes. I think we have to prove it. Yeah. You know? uh, and so that's when we actually did it. And, you know, serving real patients, we were able to prove that it was possible. But again, if we hadn't been able to do those rapid iterations, we wouldn't have been able to prove it within the three months that we were given, right? Wow. Uh, if we didn't have a, a no-code tool, we couldn't have done the rapid iterations. You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, it's really, you got to put these tools in the hands of, of the people that are, are creating the, the, the innovation. Otherwise, you know, you, you don't have enough cycles uh, to be successful uh, by the end of your runway. Yeah. 
No, yeah, it's a good point. Uh, in a previous guest, one of our favorite CIO podcast uh, episodes, you know, I asked him what should people be looking at, uh, you know, for the future uh, that not enough people are talking about. And he said, no code tools. So, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, he's on to it as well, right? Uh, there's mm -hmm. just too many problems to solve in healthcare to wait on a developer. And the no code tools have gotten so much better. It mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. But the question I have, you know, hearing this, it's great to hear the success. It's great to hear, you know, you're addressing the root of the problem, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, rather than just creating a business out of the, you know, the, the, the aftermath of the problem. Right. Um, but is this a plan? Is there a plan to scale this nationwide? What would that look like? You know, can other cities do this or is this kind of like a unique to city of Patterson? Well, it, the intention was first of all, Bloomberg would on, only grant a grant to uh, solutions that they believe could go at least nationwide. Okay. So we actually had to give them our plan for taking this nationwide. Uh, our partner, one of our, our key partners is Rutgers, New, New Jersey Medical School, right? Um, Rutgers, New Jersey, Rutgers Behavioral Health, Center of Behavioral Health actually does the call center for the state of New Jersey for addiction medicine. Okay. It's called, it's called Reach NJ. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're doing it in a way that we don't agree with. They're not connecting people with M MAT within 90 minutes. Uh, they're not necessarily vetting the providers that they're referring people to. So we have, we're working with the other part of Rutgers to develop a different model. So really, we have a very clear pathway to making this go at least statewide in that all we really have to do is convince the other half of Rutgers you know, yeah. and, the, and the state that, because the state actually hires Rutgers uh, sure. Behavioral Health of course. and just say, hey, we've got the data to prove that this model works better, I'm not even asking you to change providers, just tell the provider that you've contracted with Rutgers Behavioral mm -hmm. Health to do it this way, you know? Um, and then the other thing is, is that Rutgers, you know, uh, the behavioral health uh, side has these very large call centers, you know, this is what they do. Yep. Uh, so they can not only do it for the state of New Jersey, they could do it for, you know, the region or the nation, you know? And yeah. it's the other reason why we created the, the toll-free number 833-REAL-FIX and the domain realfix.org is, you know, uh, because we intend that to, to be available to, you know, nationwide uh, to provide this service. So it, it's definitely, we definitely have a path to that scaling this up. There's no way that Patterson can do it uh, for the entire nation, but, you know, just, as soon as we grow past our capacity, we're planning on handing it off to Rutgers and then Rutgers taking it to the state and then to the country. Awesome. Well, Ed, this was uh, insightful and interesting and a problem that definitely needs uh, attention. It sounds like you're doing some really amazing work at City of Patterson. So thanks so much for sharing your insights and perspectives. And thanks everyone for watching and listening. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcasting application. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, John. Have a good one.